Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to today's episode of the podcast. If you are watching the video, thanks for tuning in. And if you are listening, thanks for tuning in as well. Today's topic is something that I have been wanting to talk about for a while. I wanted to do an episode on, an episode on keto. And one of the main reasons why is because, you know, when keto first came out, I was hesitant to kind of take it for anything more than a regular diet. And I, I still think that in a lot of ways, people have used it just like every other diet, you know, to lose weight quickly. Um, and we'll talk about, talk about why losing weight quickly on keto seems to be a lot easier. But I wasn't really a big fan. I had actually done keto back before it was even known as keto. Um, uh, it used to be known as the Atkins diet, or at least some kind of form of the Atkins diet. And before that, it was called the warrior diet. So it's had a lot of iterations, but now I think it's finally popular because there's a little bit more science behind it. It's been tested. Uh, there's there's more talk about it. Plus, the internet makes everything uh, spread like wildfire. So, I want to do an episode on keto because I've both seen it make people even more frustrated with trying to lose weight, and I've seen it actually help a lot of people. And there's lots of different reasons why. And I'll probably do it a, a whole different podcast on the, the pros and cons of keto. But today, I think is a good first step into the keto realm on this podcast. And we're going to be talking about the 10 most, you know, common keto mistakes that you're going to see, uh, or that I typically see as a coach. And um, I work with plenty of people who eat on a low carb diet or, or eat following a more ketogenic style. And I've got no problem with the actual diet itself if you understand some very key principles. But what's interesting about keto is that when you learn how to eat in a ketogenic state, what you really learn is that processed food, regardless of whether it's protein, carbs, or fats, is junk food. And you can eat really healthy on keto. You can eat really healthy off of keto, right? I don't believe that carbohydrates are the enemy. A lot of times the word carbs is kind of a blanket statement. But, you know, there's a big difference between, you know, like brown rice, white rice, wild rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes, beans and you know a bag of Doritos, right? There's a huge difference between those two things. So I don't necessarily believe that keto is the answer for everyone, but I think it can teach you some really interesting things. And we're gonna talk a lot about the most common keto mistakes. And there's, there's 10 keto mistakes I really want to point out because I think they're the most important, but I think there can be other ones that, uh, that, that didn't really slip through the cracks, but didn't really make the list. So. I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and go over them and I'm gonna go in, into as much detail as I feel is needed uh, per topic. So this might be a longer podcast, but I think I'll keep your interest with these top 10 reasons. So let's go ahead and get things started with the number one reason. And these aren't any, in any particular order. I'm not ranking these as the most common mistakes. I just thought of a bunch of different things that I've experienced as a coach and as a person who's done keto and who tends to benefit more on a low carb diet. Uh, to, to help me make this list. So again, it's not type pro top priority. It's not something that I see more often than not, but um, these are all things that I have either witnessed as a coach or witnessed myself uh, eating in a more ketogenic like style. All right, and I always say like, because not everyone does good on 100% keto. In fact, very few people do, but what you learn from eating keto is more important than, you know, sticking to only eating fats and some proteins and, you know, Yada yada, and we'll talk about some of these things today. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one, eating low carb junk food, all right? There is no such thing as a keto brownie, all right? If you are going to, s <laughs> there is such thing as a keto brownie, but my point is, is it's, it's kind of like, well, no, it's not even like that. I'm not even gonna go there because I could talk about that for an hour, but eating low carb junk food is, not the point of keto, right? The point is not to avoid carbs and eat a ton of calories and, and to make a brownie out of just fat and, I mean, what else do you make it out of? Just fat, right? Um, dietary fat is no safer from overeating than dietary carbohydrates or even dietary protein, although it's pretty damn hard to eat a overeat steak, right? Nobody's binge eating steaks and chicken breasts and pork shoulders and things like that, right? It's just as easy to overeat fat than it is carbohydrates. Now, I'm not saying that, that everyone will do that, 
but I am saying that you can overeat fats, and we'll get into a little bit later uh, why you know ketosis and, and the ketogenic diet doesn't save you from getting fat. Uh, and we'll even talk about why that why some people feel fuller on, on a high fat diet, but we'll get to that in a minute. So eating low carb junk foods, keto brownies, keto cookies, keto pizza. Like I'm I'm somebody who I've made a keto pizza. Now I'm not you know avoiding the I, the idea that eating an entire pizza just because it's keto is going to save me from overeating. But you know I do have a little bit of a gluten sensitivity, so I choose to use ingredients that don't cause that discomfort. But at no point during eating the pizza am I going, oh, this is really good for me. It's like, it's still, still a shit ton of calories, right? So don't pretend that, that keto eating can't push you over the edge and, and make you gain weight. And there's plenty of people that have gotten fat on keto, believe it or not. All right, so that's number one. Eating low carb junk food is not keto, all right? All right, number two, not eating enough high fiber vegetables. Now, the critics in the, in, in the area that are gonna be listening to this or watching this on the YouTube channel are going to criticize me for saying that I should be, or somebody should be eating vegetables on a ketogenic diet. That it should mostly be fats and a little bit of protein, but that should pretty much be it, all right? Here's why that doesn't make any sense to me. You still need fiber, and lots of food that have fat in them don't also have fiber in them, all right? High fiber vegetables, are still healthy, by the way, guys. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have success or you, you can't have success on keto without having vegetables. There's, I'm training a guy right now who is doing it and he's having tons of success. Now, he's got a little bit of a, a hang up towards vegetables and so that's his thing and that's fine. We're working around it. We're, we're working on what he can control right now. But not eating things like broccoli and cauliflower and green beans and low carb, high fiber vegetables are still a very important part of your diet. Spinach greens, or salad greens I should say, spinach. You know, uh, uh, baby, baby kale is actually a lot easier to eat than regular kale. Regular kale is like trying to eat sandpaper. All right, I don't recommend it for everyone. Some people can do it, some people can't. But the idea that you shouldn't be eating vegetables and you should just be eating fats and some protein isn't really a average person's sustainable mentality. Now, if you've got epilepsy, which is what the ketogenic diet was originally created out of trying to solve, and you're trying to limit the amount of epileptic episodes that you have, that might be a good approach. But for 99.9% .9 of the population who is doing keto, you need to be eating high fiber vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, Brussels sprouts, spinach greens, right? One of the biggest advantages you can have on a ketogenic diet is a salad, right? You get a nice fat-based dressing, you get some cherry tomatoes. Oh no, cherry tomatoes have natural sugar in them. Forget about it. If you're that worried about natural sugars from things like tomatoes, then you're a hypochondriac and you need to relax, okay? All right, so number two, not eating enough high fiber vegetables. Number three, eating too much fat. Yes, that's a thing. Now, I, I know, again, I'm gonna get pushed back from critics, but the whole ketogenic diet is about eating fats. Yeah, it is, but you can very, over, very easily overeat fat, right? Again, not everyone's gonna have that experience. Some people are gonna have plenty of, of, of good experience eating more fat. And the reason why it's easier to eat as much fat as you want and not have this overeating effect is because your brain and your body have this chemical, and I forget the name of it, of course I forget the name of it when I'm doing a podcast episode, um, but essentially it's a hormone that signals when fat is being eaten. And it tells the brain, hey, we're getting essential nutrients, we're good, don't worry about it, um, you don't need to eat any more calories. So it's one of those satiety mechanisms. So satiety can basically happen in a, one of three ways essentially through protein, because a hormone secretion comes from eating protein. So your brain and your, and your stomach are talking to each other saying, hey, we're getting enough calories. From fat, or from the volume of food that you eat. So, for instance, you have two hormones that basically tell your brain, hey, we're getting enough. One of them's stimulated by protein, one of them's stimulated by fat. The other way in which you know you're satiated is the, um, the, the weight of your stomach. So if your stomach becomes heavier, it's like putting it on a scale 
and then your brain goes, oh, we're getting enough food. Now, when you eat high fiber vegetables, your stomach fills up a lot quicker and it's a lot heavier because fiber is dense, right? It, it's fiber, I mean, fiber is fiber, right? So those are the three ways that you can create satiety. Well, if you overdo fat and you don't have a balance between that and protein and fiber, you are going to have the opportunity to overeat. And I've had personal experience with this. All right, now I'm a pretty natural overeater myself. I'm someone who overeats very easily because I use food a lot of times to relieve my stress, to relieve my discomfort. And it's something that I'm continually working on. So I'll, I'll say that full transparency. But at the same time, there needs to be, we need to kill the idea that you can't overeat fat. It's probably a lot harder than overeating carbohydrates, at least in my personal experience. But as a coach, I've seen people do both. And so you're not immune to overeating because of how much fat you eat. All right, so just keep that in mind. This isn't gonna to apply to everyone, by the way. So don't, if, if you're someone who's succeeding eating, eating as much fat as you want, more power to you. But if you're someone who's noticing that you're really not losing weight, not, not losing body fat on a ketogenic lifestyle, then you might wanna look into possibly eating too much fat and not enough fiber. When someone comes to me and they're eating too much fat on a ketogenic diet, I immediately add more fiber. And you know, nine times out of 10, it works perfectly. And the other thing I add is more protein. And we'll talk about that in a second. In fact, that's what we're gonna do. Number four, number four is not eating enough protein. Now on a traditional ketogenic lifestyle, the amount of protein you eat, I think doesn't exceed 15% of total calories. So a lot of times that's maybe like 96 grams a day for the average height and weight of a person, right? Let's say it's that. Now I'm not saying you have to like overeat protein and have like six ounces of protein in a meal, but three to four ounces of protein or 20 to 30 grams in a meal, that's totally fine. And I think you should do that. And I, I would encourage you to eat that much protein. That's a little above the, the common recommendation. I've seen ketogenic macronutrients that look like 10% protein, 90% fat, zero carbs, where they're basically eating cheese, cheeseburgers every single day without the bun. All right, some people do that. But again, when we're trying to lose weight, I don't really give a shit what your macronutrients look like. I'm all about trying to make it so that your appetite is suppressed and you're comfortable. You don't feel like you're restricting your calories. You don't feel like you are under eating. You feel like you're satiated. You're getting pleasure out of your food, but you're also not overdoing it, right? I don't give a shit if it's keto. I don't care if it's balanced carb. I don't care if it's high carb. If you are losing weight or you're maintaining your weight, if that's your goal, if you're healthy, if your appetite control is under wraps, who cares what your macros look like? Right? With the exception of not eating junk food just because you're one of those, what is it, IFFM, IFFYMers or whatever. Yeah, we'll, we'll take save that for another episode. But I'm, I'm pretty stingy on that. I'm pretty stingy on the idea that you need a macronutrient profile that's going to get you the results you're looking for and not the other way around. Now, for a lot of people, finding keto has helped them understand that and that's why that's important. And that's really the benefit of keto is to basically strip everything down to something very simplistic and understand the importance of fats because for the last you know 50 years, we've all thought fat is gonna kill us. And now we're starting to realize that's not true. That's a huge benefit. So keto has its ups and downs, but again, that's why we're focusing on these keto mistakes because I want people to understand that keto is not a uh, godsend. It's not a save all. There are mistakes like anything else and we need to know about it. So not getting enough protein. If I'm working with somebody and they're consistently overeating and I look at their protein, nine times out of 10, it's too low. So I up their protein a little bit. I keep, I, you know, obviously decrease their fats a little bit, make sure they're getting some kind of fiber. Works pretty well. All right, um, number five is something you might not expect. Number five is being afraid to salt your food. So like fat, salt has been something we've been trying to avoid for a long time because we think it's directly related to high blood pressure. We think it's causing people to have very negative side effects when it comes to their health. And what we're realizing is, is that getting enough salt is actually very healthy. 
and trying to reduce your salt too much is not good for blood pressure. Um, I forget the name of the book and I can't pronounce the guy's name who writes the book, but I think it's called like The Truth About Salt or something like that. And the, the book came out and I'll, I'll, I can put it in the show notes if I need to so you guys can check it out. I always forget the most important things when I'm doing a podcast because I'm so focused on the actual topic that sometimes I forget where the references come from. But I'll do my, my best to reference it in the show notes in case you want to check it out. But he basically proved through digging through the research that not getting enough salt actually causes high blood pressure as opposed to the other way around. So go figure that not getting enough salt is actually the problem. And high blood pressure can be affected by lots of things like just being overweight. So sometimes people that lose weight, I would say most of the time when people lose weight and get down to a weight that's more sustainable for them and healthier for them, their high blood pressure goes away. Not completely, I mean, I wouldn't say that anyone's high blood pressure ever is cured, but you can definitely reduce it by reducing your weight. So don't be afraid to salt your food. And what's cool about salt is you have a natural aversion to it, where if you get too much, you'll, you'll know right away, right? So just like if you overeat sweets, you get a stomach ache, if you put too much, if you're getting too much salt, your body will basically tell you, yeah, you don't need any more. Stop, stop consuming salt. Uh, and that, it will be a very obvious inversion. So make sure you salt your food appropriately, all right? Don't overdo it and like try to binge eat salt, all right? Just salt your food. And it, the salt that I would recommend getting because it's the highest quality is Redmond's Real Salt. And you can buy it on Amazon. It's really not that expensive. Um, but if you're not willing to go out and buy a new thing of salt right away, then what I would recommend is just try to use whatever salt you have. And then when you have to buy salt again, get Redmond's Real Salt. It's like $11 for a bag. And a bag is like a pound. It's huge. It's a shit ton of salt. So you're not going to like break the bank buying the salt. But if you don't want to go that route, pink Himalayan salt is, will work. Um, and that's better than nothing. It's better than, you know... Uh, ocean salt that we're getting right now, which is uh, unfortunately polluted because we don't know how to take care of the earth. Um, but what's cool about Redmond's Real Salt is it comes from a dried up uh, seabed in Utah. So the, the salt is old, meaning that it's not contaminated with the same kind of contaminants that we have uh, in today's ocean water. All right, so that is number five. Don't be afraid to salt your food. All right, number six, snacking too often. So within uh, the keto diet, there's been a lot of talk about ketosis kind of breaking the rules when it comes to calories, right? That if you're in ketosis, the calories don't matter. Now, I don't know who made that up, but I used to believe that as well. And I think it was Gary Taubes who was really like trying to push that idea. And I think Gary was just misunderstood. I understood his point that the likelihood of overeating in a ketogenic state is a lot slimmer than overeating if you're a carb burner. But at the same time, no rule breaks the calorie rule, all right? It's the chief rule in everything when it comes to energy balance. And I think we have to understand that until it's proven otherwise, solid evidence proves otherwise. That is what we need to follow because there's so much evidence that proves that calories, no matter how they're composed, matter. All right, so let's just, you know, push the whole keto, keeps you from gaining fat thing away and realize that keto being in ketosis does not save you from, from gaining fat. All right. And so under that umbrella of this idea that being in keto means you can eat whatever you want, people are oftentimes still snacking as much as they used to. Now, if you're just starting off and you're just trying to get used to the ketogenic diet, then that's fine. You know, add snacks where you need them. I'm totally cool with that because you're increasing the quality of your food. And I'd rather you do that first over everything else. As you start to lose weight and as you start to hit some sticking points, you will eventually adapt to even that many calories. And what's cool about the ketogenic diet, and this is a pro, again, I'm not anti-keto, I'm just trying to help you understand that it's the ketogenic diet is not this like magic wand that you wave and you eat this way and everything is perfect. But you know, when you start eating in a more ketogenic state or a more ketogenic style, you're going to be less hungry less often. So snacking can kind of naturally go away. Again, I'm not saying it does that for everyone, but snacking can be something that uh, almost 
naturally disappears because you're not actually hungry and you're more in tune with your hunger cues. So if you're just getting started on keto, just get used to it. It's totally cool to have snacks, but if you're noticing that your weight loss is stalling and you're actually not eating when you're hungry, then snacking might be the problem. So you're probably snacking too, too often, reduce your snacking. All right, so that was number six. Number seven, not being aware of hidden carbohydrates. All right, so if you go to the back of any food and you look at the nutrition facts, carbohydrates, I think, other than fat, well, no, I'd say carbohydrates probably has the most like sub areas, right? It has the most sub uh, like categories. It's got fiber, sometimes it has sugar alcohol, sometimes it has, now it has in, uh, included sugars or added sugars, right? So if you look at new nutrition labels now, you have something called added sugars and then natural sugars. All right, and I'll give you some background on why they have to do that. Food companies are putting sugar in food that already has a little bit of sugar in it, perfect example is yogurt, and trying to disguise these foods as having natural forms of sugar. So they're being deceitful, as always. Food companies don't give a shit about you or your health. They care about making money. And so the FDA had to step in and say, look assholes, people are buying food under the impression that this, this is good for you. But in reality, it's, it, you're adding sugar to it to make it worse for them. All right, tomato uh, spaghetti sauce or tomato paste or whatever you wanna call it is another example. Yogurt's a, a prime example. Yogurt has about seven grams of lactose per serving. Lactose is a form of milk sugar, which is, is not a very addictive form. If you try to get addicted to lactose, good luck, because it's not very sweet. Um, and so they hide it in foods like that because it says, oh, well, you know, it naturally already has, you know, seven grams of sugar, but then they throw in, you know, 22 grams of added sugar and make it really sweet and yada yada. So those are things like hidden carbs. Now, a question that I get often on, on keto is, well, what about net carbs, right? What are net carbs? Well, net carbs are essentially, if you were to take a food that has 20 grams of carbs and 10 of those grams of carbs are fiber, then you have a net of 10 grams of fiber. Because, I'm sorry, 10 grams of carbs, right? 10 grams of fiber, 20 total grams, 10 net carbs because fiber really doesn't count as a, as a form of calories. I mean, it does, but at the end of the day, again, no one's binge eating on, on uh, you know, fiber. No one's binge eating celery sticks unless you dip them in peanut butter, right? So you have to keep that in mind. Oh, that's, by the way, that's another good keto food. If you're somebody who's having a hard time, you know, trying to get started on keto, peanut butter and celery, bomb. All right, so um, not being aware of hidden carbs. And if you have more questions on something like hidden carbs or how to read a nutrition label. I'd love to do a podcast on that. It'd probably have to be a more visual podcast. You could you know, physically see what I'm talking about. But if that's something you guys are interested in, hit me up, let me know. I'd love to do something on that if you guys are interested in, in learning about that. All right, number eight, not eating enough whole foods. So this goes kind of back to number one. If I was to take a journal of all the food that you eat on keto and all of it's like, processed keto food, right? Keto crackers, keto uh, pancakes, that's one of my favorite. Um, and I'm not talking about like using almond flour necessarily, although that can very easily become kind of a, a junk food. Um, keto cookies, right? It's like at some point, guys, you just have to realize that you're really not learning the whole point of keto, which is to take you back to the, your, your ancestor days and realize that you need to eat whole food, right? That's why I preach eating whole food because whole food is the ultimate keto diet. It's the ultimate paleo diet. It's the ultimate diet for human beings. It's how we got this far in our evolution, all right? Whole food is what has sustained us up until this point. If we have been able to have healthy, happy, and sustainable lives through whole foods, why are we still chasing things like keto cookies and low carb you know, potatoes? Like, What the hell even is that? So just eat whole foods. And sometimes that means uh, having uh, a certain a level of carbohydrates in your food, right? And we'll talk in a little bit about how carbs affect sleep and why some people that are on keto don't sleep very well. I'll talk about that at the very end. So not eating enough whole foods and, still, and instead trying to substitute 
and eat keto junk food. It's just, it's stupid and it's not gonna get you very far and you're not gonna feel very good on it because at the end of the day, what is in whole food is very hard to mimic and companies are gonna throw keto this and keto that at you and sure, every now and then you're throwing in some, you know, some fun foods, but really understand your philosophy and your principles should be whole food based. All right, number nine, stressing over ketosis, all right? Ketosis is the state in which your body is burning fat for fuel. Now, there's nothing wrong with ketosis. I think it's, a, it's, it's I've been in ketosis, I've been out of ketosis. I can tell you 100% with certainty that I felt way better in, in ketosis. The problem is, is that if you're new to keto, it's kind of hard to maintain if you have a social life, or it's kind of hard to maintain even if you slip up a little bit. So because it's, it's so easy to slip up in ketosis, I don't recommend people stressing over being in ketosis and it being like this magical state where you know pigs are flying and you have all the money in the world and you can do whatever you want some kind of dreamland right if you're just getting started on keto then don't worry so much about ketosis all right just try to do your best to eat more fat more fiber and then more protein that's it just focus on those three things if you can do that ketosis will come with time as you get better at actually eating in this pattern and you find a rhythm that works for you and then number 10 is giving up too soon, all right? If you try keto for the first time and you don't have success with it, don't stress over it, all right? Try it again, try it again. We live in a world that is, is dominated by carbohydrates. Everywhere you look, there are carbohydrates because they're cheap to make and it doesn't cost companies, or companies make a lot of money on on carb rich foods because again, it doesn't take a lot to make. They can mark it, mark it up, maybe even 200%, sell it to you, make a shit ton of money, and they're happy. They don't give a shit about your health. If you're eating Doritos, do you think that people give a crap that you're eating Doritos? No, they, they want you to eat them so that they can make money. They don't care about your health. So just realize that it's gonna take some time to get used to. We live, again, we live in a carb dominant world. It's gonna take some time to go to the store and buy just cheese and salami and carrots and you know, you know, things that are you're not used to and you're gonna fail and that's completely fine. I, I think I failed six times trying to get back on the keto horse. And I, and I realized after a while that the ketogenic diet was just too extreme for me. And that's why I encourage people who eat keto that if you slip up a little bit, don't worry about it, all right, it happens. Eventually, you'll probably come to terms with the idea that trying to be 100% keto is not gonna happen, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna learn that protein is important. You're gonna learn that fat is okay to eat, and it's not gonna kill you. You're gonna learn that fibers, uh, you know, tasty ways to eat vegetables. You're gonna learn all these things, and that's really the benefit of keto, not like being in, in magic keto, ketosis land, all right? Um, that's really hard to do, all right? So I wanna close by talking about ketogenic effect on sleep. A lot of people that, and including myself, that have gone through keto actually sleep less and, and have a harder time sleeping. And that's because the, the hormones that help you fall asleep at night, which are serotonin and melatonin, are derived from carbohydrate-rich foods. So if you are completely taking out those foods, those chemicals aren't being made. It's one of the reasons why people feel like they have a lot of energy on keto is because you're using a fuel source that's one, more sustainable, and two, doesn't stimulate those hormones to be produced to actually um, uh, make you want to be sleepy. And if you are sleepy after a meal, it's probably because you had too many carbohydrates. So this is what you do. This is why I'm in the process of creating kind of a keto modification diet. And I think there's even a diet out there called uh, Carb Night by Joel Kiefer or Kiefer or something like that. You can check that out if you want. Um, but it basically just restricts carbohydrates to dinner time, so that those stimulate, uh, so those hormones are stimulated to help you fall asleep and stay asleep. Uh, so that's what I recommend if you're somebody out there who is having a hard time sleeping on keto, like you're really sticking to it, and you're noticing your sleep isn't as good. Try to just have, you know, maybe 15 to 20 grams at night, maybe a little bowl of fruit, or you know, some beans with your dinner, or maybe a, a little bit of potatoes or whatever, and allow your body to get those beneficial hormones to help you sleep. Because if you're not sleeping and you're on keto, I don't care how much weight you lose, you're gonna be miserable and life is gonna suck. So um, that's what I would recommend when it comes to that. All right guys, so thanks for listening to today's episode. This was about twice as long as most of my episodes are. 
Um, I'm gonna try to keep these short in the future, but this was a really big topic that I wanted to really dive into and, and make, uh, give you as much information as possible. If you enjoyed this podcast and you're gonna listen to it again and you got a lot of benefit from it, I would really, 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 really appreciate a five-star rating on iTunes or on Podbean or wherever you're listening to it. Um, and not for my own ego, I'm not here to stroke my ego, but it helps this podcast get out to more people when it's highly rated, uh, iTunes and Apple are going to spread it across more and more uh, mediums. So it helps me out to get the word out to more people. Because as you guys know, this information is extremely valuable, extremely useful and practical, and it can help a lot of people. So if you want to help more people and, and kind of do it in an easy and simple way, uh, this is the best way to do it. You just go on iTunes, you give a five-star rating. You can even leave a comment if you want. I would really appreciate it. So anyway, guys, thanks again for listening to today's podcast. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel, thanks for watching. I will check you guys out in a future episode.